Thank you for choosing Muddy Boots Outdoors, and today we're going to install a Mega Wear keel guard. I'm going to go ahead and show you the steps necessary for that to take place. And it's a very easy do it yourself application, as stated in the back of the package there. Four simple steps etch, clean, prime, and apply. This whole process took about uh, an hour or so, and it probably could, could have took a little bit less, but I was in no rush. Um, and always make sure you follow a manufacturer's instructions so that way you do not have any mishaps of your keel guard coming off while you're out playing around in the water. So some of the supplied things that came with primer, the scotch pad, and a burnishing tool. And you will be using all of these. So I'm just showing you that that is the keel that I will be covering up to protect. Uh, when I did get this, uh, the keel on it was pretty damaged, so I actually had to lay in some more fiberglass, and uh, I just want to protect that initial investment. So that is the actual keel guard there in my hands, and as we can see, it is very wide. It covers up a pretty large area. I, however, do not need it to cover up that large of an area, so I will be trimming it down and a razor blade working in those grooves makes some very nice straight and precision cuts. So here I have it trimmed down. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay it on there and uh, kind of dry fit, so to speak, to make sure it will still cover up what I need it to. And uh, as looking at it, it covers up exactly what I need it to. Now, one thing I would say, I did this in the winter, and, and it was about 57, 60 degrees outside, which the manufacturer recommends that it is that or above. Um, I took that inside, so it actually got a little bit more pliable. Um, when you do start working, uh, make sure you tape out your area before you go ahead and etch it, and that way you reduce the risk of damaging any unwanted areas. So using the scotch pad that's applied, just go ahead and uh, start working them elbows in there and etch away. On this one, I had to remove polishing compound and wax. So I, uh, it will take a good scrubbing. So after you get that uh, first etching done, go ahead and clean it with just some rubbing alcohol. Uh, make sure you have at least a couple of the just regular hand towels, or not really hand towels, but shop towels, or, uh, but do not use rags. Rags will leave fibers in there, and they will reduce the adhesion of the actual uh, keel guard. Um, but I would recommend flipping your shop towel over there a couple different times um, and going over that at least twice on the full keel. Uh, probably using a, a new rag or so or at least flipping it over every couple feet and that will remove any dust contaminants It will also get rid of any leftover wax or polishing compounds that might be left in there now since mine had such a thick coat of polishing compound and wax I went ahead and etched it twice because I wanted a superior adhesion for the product and I, I wanted many little grooves and cuts and scratches in there so that way the actual adhesive material could bond effectively so and this is one part that you do want to take your time on do not rush it if you do rush this you are probably going to have a product that while you're out boating around um, is going to get chewed to pieces by your prop So here I am, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, re-clean it again after the second etching and that will remove all of the contaminants or potential contaminants that would reduce the adhesion of the actual keel guard. Now 
Now I do believe the manufacturer's instructions said not to use acetone, that acetone will actually degrade the adhesive properties of the glue that's on this keel guard. They specifically said to use alcohol. So once that's all good and clean, go ahead and let it dry. From there you are going to uh, crack the glass vial inside that and give it a real good hard shaking to mix everything up. That is a one-time use primer. Now there were two sent in the container um, and I would say had I not um, made the actual keel guard smaller I probably would have needed to use both of them. Uh, for this actual project I only needed to use the one because the other two pieces I cut off will actually be used on the sides to protect the uh, that outer ridge if it bumps up against a dock or a log. On this primer once it's good and mixed up you're gonna kinda dab it a few different times to wet out the sponge on the front of it. Um, and then afterwards you're just going to give a nice light but even coat down the area that you want the keel guard to adhere to. Also make sure that you uh, get a very good coat but a light and even coat on sp specifically on the sides of where the, your keel guard will attach and that will um, increase bonding adhesion and it will prevent any area that could potentially um, not adhere So after you get the primer and you let it sit, I, I believe for uh, five minutes or so, I let mine sit for well into an hour. Um, I, go ahead and lay out your keel guard and kind of get an area of where you're going to get it situated. Now this one, as you'll see, does not extend all the way down to the bottom and I knew that it was not going to do that. Um, I'm not overly concerned with it just because that back end of the actual boat will be in water and not up on a beach, hopefully, and, uh, or at least, you know, smack in the back end of logs. Now, once you get everything lined up, the uh, red tape that is on the back of the keel guard will be removed and you will begin um, adhering it to your keel. And uh, just make sure that you do take your time, that everything is straight, and you don't have uh, what looks like a bunch of S's or snakes in your keel guard. And as you go, just kind of lightly press, and that will start the adhering and bonding process. As you can see, I'm just kind of laying it out to prevent it from kind of snaking on me. And then you just have pull maybe a couple feet at a time, line everything up, and set it into place. Now as you can see there are three pieces of tape and they are scored, one for the middle, two for the sides, and that is so on the larger piece you can get the middle piece centered in and then pull away the sides to make sure that everything is lined up. Now one thing I can do here is if I really want to, I can go buy a smaller keel guard. They offer them in many various sizes. This is actually the charcoal color. I felt that charcoal would look really good with that seafoam green. And I can, since I did, go ahead and etch and prime that whole bottom part. Um, I can go ahead and, if need be, get a shorter piece of the keel guard, trim it down, and attach it on the whole length of the keel. So here I'm just pressing in the edges and in the middle to make sure everything is nice and seated. Here shortly this is where the burnishing tool will come in handy. And this burnishing tool does a couple different things. So 
So as we can see here, the burnishing tool does one. You can apply pressure, and since it's got a little bit of a curvature, you can push it down on there and really create a nice strong bond, pushing out any air bubbles that might be in there preventing a bond. On top of it, since it is a plastic, it will not damage the keel guard or at least scruff it up or rip it or put any deep gouges into it. But it is very handy at get, making sure that you have very good adhesion. So after that, you can uh, go ahead and remove your tape lines and uh, go ahead and get rid of them. Uh, and then marvel at your nice good hard work and protecting the keel of your watercraft. If you did like everything that you've seen here today, I've got many more videos that you can watch. Uh, do make sure that you like and subscribe and click that little bell for notifications so that way when I post a video, you'll be the first to know. Thank you for choosing Muddy Boots Outdoors and I really do hope that you enjoyed uh, the content that I provided you today. And there is your final results.